Hi, I'm Talia Baroncelli, and you're watching the analysis.news. I'll shortly be joined by French journalist Benoît Lambert to speak about Emmanuel Macron's pension reforms and the massive protests against these in France. If you enjoy this content, please go to the website, theanalysis.news, and hit the donate button at the top right corner of the screen. You can also get on the newsletter, that way you'll be notified every time there's a new episode, and consider going to our YouTube channel, The Analysis Hyphen News. Hit like and subscribe on all the videos, and I'll see you soon. Joining me now to speak about the French pension reforms is Renaud Lambert. He's a journalist at Le Monde Diplomatique. Thank you so much for joining me, Renaud. Thank you for having me. Well, why don't we start talking about the response to Emmanuel Macron's pension reforms? We will get into the details of this throughout the interview because Macron extended um, the the pension year or the retirement age from 62 to 64, and there are lots of um, really nitty gritty details around that. But why don't we first start talking about the eventful past few months and how so many people in France have been going out on the streets and protesting for weeks on end. Yeah, to give you an idea of where we are at in France at the moment, um, the authorities have passed a new law whereby it's forbidden to walk in the street with, with pots and pans. And why have they done that? Because people have taken to accompany ministers and the president wherever they go to talk or to inaugurate something, you know, and they, they are there surrounding them, beating on pots and pans to mock them. And this is something that we have never seen in, in France before. This social movement, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to where it started, but at this stage, this social movement is something that is incredibly joyful, happy, and humorous. You know, uh, um, the anger has turned into mockery. The power is no longer legitimate and people make fun of them. And I mean, it's it's got to the stage where ministers avoid having to come out of their ministries because for fear of being welcomed by this type of uh, gatherings, you know, and um, the minister for um, uh, 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 the interior, um, two days ago, pretended that he had cancelled the meeting in order for the gathering not to be there when he actually went. You know, so they have to organize this type of things not to be faced with uh, a people's discontent, but even more than discontent. As this at this stage is people's um, total um, uh, um, well, I guess uh, irony. You know, so. How did we get? Did we get there? Um, initially, when the uh, reform uh, was presented, um, nobody was sure what was going to happen. You know, um, as trade unions in France tend to organize marches, but you know, it's a one-off march, and we don't know where it's going to go. Uh, but they, 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 they were quite big. Uh, um, they gathered over a million people once, twice, up to ten times. We've reached, I uh, think we've passed the, the, the 12th demonstration and um, the amount of time the government failed to address people's um, uh, 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 anger at the uh, plan reform has, has uh, uh, increased that anger to a level uh, that is uh, um, quite rare in France. Now, apart from the initial uh, trade union movement, a lot of young people have gathered and uh, helped uh, um, organize this demonstration. And this has raised a lot of questions because people have said, well, why do young people care about retirement? And of course, right-wing pundits have you know, complained about young people who only think about retiring. You know, They don't think about work. But I think um, what people have understood and the, the younger people have understood is that the reason why people don't want that reform is because retirement is just the end of everything they want, they, they, they don't agree with, you know, um, the power of your employer, uh, uh, all the little vexations that you receive at work, you know, everything that doesn't work is supposed to end when, when finally you retire. And fighting for retirement is fighting against everything that is not functioning in society, which means that this um, uh, movement against the pension reform is a lot larger 
then a movement against a specific attempt at increasing um, the uh, age at which you can retire. And it has unified so many people across, I would say, maybe not even the the political spectrum, but also the age spectrum. As you said, there's so many young people out on the streets, older people, and I, I guess not just people from the left, but all sorts of people of different political ideologies are protesting. But in particular, the unions, how have the unions come together in this particular instance to protest against these reforms more so than they did in the past? I'll answer about the union. I just want to um, uh, bring to your attention the fact that that cross-spectrum mobilization is quite uh, is quite unheard of. A couple of days ago, um, a very uh, uh, upper-class conservative politician gathered with the uh, leader of the CGT, which is you know very red, very you know, uh, linked to the Communist Party. They gathered, you know, to unite against that uh, project. And as you said, across the board, there's a lot of uh, of uh, complaints, uh, whether regarding the law, the specific aspects of the law, or the way Macron went back. And it is true that um, uh, the way uh, trade unions have united is uh, quite unique. I think it's the first time in about 10 years. And one of the reasons for this is that uh, the attempt at promoting some kind of social partnership uh, unions that developed in the 1980s through the 1990s with a specific s- trade union in France, CFDT, has come to an end. Um, uh, Macron, uh, as opposed to previous presidents, didn't take the time to organize his project, his bill, with that specific trade union. He didn't take the time to discuss it with them. They had specific uh, proposition, proposal that I would I didn't agree with personally, you know, and most of the left didn't agree with. But he could have, you know, negotiated this with them. He didn't do that, so he failed to actually organize his um, his support base in the trade union movements, which meant that the road was clear for unions to unite against, you know, this attempt at bulldozing uh, any type of um, concertation. Is that because um, primarily in the past few decades, there have been more so-called yellow unions, so unions which weren't necessarily completely independent or didn't have members who were actually paying for the union to represent them, but they were more tied to the state? Has that really played into this? Well, we don't have yellow yellow unions that would have um, that much of an impact, but you know, part of the left, and I would have been guilty of this, you know, would have tended to call uh, so-called social democratic unions yellow because, you know, they're, I mean, there is a saying um, uh, uh, in the in the social movement in France about one of the leading unions in, in the current um, uh, demonstrations against the, the, the bill. But, you know, uh, a, a couple of years ago, the, the saying was that if the, uh, if, uh, employers wanted to uh, impose a ball and chain on workers, that union would negotiate the weight of the ball. I don't know if it's clear, you know, but, you know, they would negotiate, you know, right. they are negotiating, you know, and they would sign agreements, you know, and uh, uh, um, so, uh, of course, they played a particular part in in um, the reorganization of uh, labor regulations. But what happened this time that was different to to the past was that the uh, the the power the president didn't uh, um, discuss with them didn't take into account their own uh, a proposal for the reform so he went into the fight with that their support and they're making him pay for this well you've seen i guess I think 70% of people in a recent poll are saying that they don't agree with the reforms and something like 90% of people who are economically active don't agree with the reforms. And I think in the first few decades of the 1900s in France, when there were big social movements, there was lots of negotiation with the government, maybe less so in the, in the past few decades. But what seems to me at least so very specific about Emmanuel Macron and his party is that there's no sense whatsoever of the protests being a form of political participation. 
he says, you know, people voted in the elections and that was their way of expressing their political views. And so people going out on the streets, I respect them. I don't think he actually does. He says he respects them, but there's he doesn't see that as like a legitimate um, political act of voicing what their views or grievances would be. And I recently saw, I think it was uh, Jacques Marie who was a, a former MP of uh, the Renaissance Party of, of Macron's party, saying that who are these? I'm ashamed of these people who don't recognize that we have a pension reform issue. Like, how can they not get this through their heads? Why are they still demonstrating? So it seems like there's a real contempt on the part of the government towards the people and also the right to protest. Are you seeing that as well? Oh, yeah, 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 big time. Um, there's an attitude to, to Macron, you know, very aristocratic attitude. I mean, uh, we have stopped compiling uh, little sentences, you know, that he have uh, little snippets, uh, things that, he will, that we, he will say, which are, you know, plain humiliation at people looking for a job, at, you know, people demonstrating. There is a very superior, condescending tone to him. Um, I think uh, 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 he represents, in a way, politically represents a last attempt at the ancien regime to perpetuate itself. Um, um, when he was elected first, we had witnessed the collapse of the traditional left and traditional right wing in France, as in many places, Greece, Spain. And Macron turned up as something new, you know, uh, and he was uh, he received support from the traditional left and traditional right. That meant that in order to get him to be president, they had to abandon the idea that you know you could you could, you had pluralism in that democracy that you could you know choose either the left or the right because they all supported him. It was him or chaos, you know. And at this stage, we we have seen that you know he's pushed the same logic further, and uh, uh, it. It shows that at this stage, the system is, is quite ready to impose a very high degree of violence in order to have its way. Now, another reason why people are mobilizing is because the, the government has been lying so much and the demonstration has been made that it's been lying so much that it's been lying on, on a lot of issues. You know, one had been quite, um, um, uh, you know, had appealed to people during the campaign, Macron said, I'm going to do reform, uh, a pension reform, and everybody will receive 1,200 euros, you know, matter, no matter what. And, you know, one day, I actually listened to the clip again. One day, there was this economist that came to the number one radio in France, and he was talking in front of a, a, another economist, uh, uh, someone close to the government, and he said, well, no, that's not true. And the, the, the journalists were there, what, what? Uh, but the government has been saying that it was, you know. Yeah, but the government has been lying, you know, and he made the demonstration that what had been presented as a measure that would offer everybody at least 1,200 euros was a pure lie. And uh, there were other uh, uh, um, lies of this uh, uh, type. For instance, Macron said, we have to do this reform because, you know, we, uh, uh, we need to balance the budget. But it's been demonstrated that the reason why we need to balance the budget is because Macron cut taxes on rich people. So he created a deficit, a deficit, you know, that he then needs to to compensate and he's giving to the rich and he's really literally taking from the poor people, you know, that will depend on their pension to live. And uh, he said also, well, we need to do this because we need to reassure the uh, uh, financial markets, you know, uh, uh, we are going to get a, a, a rate downgrade if we don't do this. And then we did get a, a rate downgrade. And uh, uh, the reason why we did, I think, is because the demonstrations were so big. And as you know, you know, um, rating agencies, they don't rate countries, they rate populations. And the French people saw their rate downgraded because they were so militant and so adamant that they will not accept that reform. So, yeah, at this stage, there is no, um, there's no uh, political um, uh, uh, base, there's no... Um, rational that the government can use to say we need this reform you know all their arguments have been destroyed i think the situation in france at the moment is a tug of war similar to the one that um um opposed uh margaret thatcher to the miners in the uk in 84 
and uh, Reagan to air traffic controllers er earlier on in the 80s. And uh, um, I think the stakes are quite high. Uh, for the social movement, if we fail to uh, uh, get Mac Macron to uh, um, uh, 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 cancel this reform, it, it will take a toll. You know, seeds have been planted, you know, and we perhaps we can talk about it. You know, seeds have been planted. But, you know, there were more than 12 uh, demonstrations with over a million people taking to the streets. You know, polls are sky high saying how much how much French people don't want this. You know, so um, a, a losing would be would be quite hard. But for Macron, you know, at at some stage, you know, the, the private sector people are going to take pick up their phones and say, well, you need to do something, you know, because we can't work anymore. You know, this has to stop. You know, the institutions are being delegitimized. You know, you have to stop this. It can go on. And if that happens, and, you know, cross my fingers, when that happens, Macron will find it very hard to carry on with his neoliberal uh, 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 project, you know. Well, I think it's also very ironic that Macron is often one of the first people to condemn authoritarianism and autocrats in other parts of the world. But if you look at his own uh, approach and policies in France, he's been rather anti-democratic. I think, you know, the government has used this very controversial Article 49.3 where they've pushed, uh, well, they pushed the pension reform using this method where it, basically it bypasses the the, the National Assembly or, or the Parliament, and it means that I think it's a Senate who then um, votes on it, and the Senate is an unelected body. So it is a very undemocratic way of pushing through reforms, and I think this year alone they've already used this mechanism 10 times. Absolutely. Uh, of course, it is you know in the Constitution, so it still is technically legal, but it's just probably not the, the best way to uh, actually engage and to address an, an, is an issue which has clearly lots of opposition and people on the street have, have demonstrated that opposition. So you, you speak about how he's de delegitimized um, or he's eroded a lot of these democratic institutions by by doing so. So I, I wonder what will be the response to that long term from these social movements? Like how, the, the next election is, you know, a few years down the road and he Macron already has like a very, very um, thin uh, coalition so, or, or, or mandate because he didn't have a large majority. The election went into a runoff into the second stage where he beat Marine Le Pen. So how do you think this is going to impact social movements in general over the next few years? Well, I mean... It, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, try and predict anything, but I think the situation is, like I said, uh, um, social democrat, social de neoliberal, social democratic left and traditional conservatism joined forces to push Macron into becoming the next president, and you know, so something is going to rise uh, uh, against this. Now, in France, we have a very strong far right movement that is there waiting. Uh, for its turn to uh, to 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 take the presidency, and chances are that for part of the population, Marine Le Pen, who embodies that movement, is going to be a solution. Um, you know, um, in France we talk about dégagisme. Uh, that means you know, like anybody but them. You know, and for some people, Marine Le Pen will mean that it's not the old traditional political people that are in power. Uh, of course, there is also, you know, um, a, um, a far right movement uh, of people uh, composed of people who actually believe in that ideology. We've seen them in, marching in the streets in France last week. Uh, so that that is something that will be there and that we will need to fight against. Um, at the same time, um, there is a a. a, a left force in the parliament in parliament and they've been doing a very good job you know i, I think and i think um the uh, social movement will blow into their cells now to such, to what extent it's difficult to say the next presidential election is in 27 uh and on the trade union side um the opposition 
to the uh, reform has been a lot stronger than um, the upper echelons expected. And that has imposed um, a, some soul searching, searching to the main trade unions that they actually have had to turn, you know, to, to reorient their, 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 their line to the left. You know, there, was, there were major uh, conventions for both CFDT and CGT, and they both led to a left-wing inflection. That is positive, obviously, but the most positive aspect is the amount of young people taking to the street at the moment. I mean, they are they are encountering uh, firsthand what is a police state, you know, a neoliberal state that is only kept together by uh, you know people being clubbed over the head. Uh, now, obviously, that is very sad, but it's it's a very intense political school that um, you know French streets are are a very intense political political school at the moment. Well, why don't we talk about the actual reforms? Because we've spoken about, you know, the social movements and, and the political context, but perhaps we could get into the reform itself because I've seen all sorts of information and reporting on it, which is a bit confusing at times. So um, my understanding is that Macron has, you know, increased the age from the, the pension age from 62 to 64, but that you would have to work for a minimum of uh, 43 years or, or pay contributions for at least 43 years, or as before it was 42 years. And according to the reforms, after these 43 years, then you would get uh, 1,200 euros a month. But there are certain exceptions for people who have more physically demanding jobs. Um, is that really the case and who actually is you know disproportionately affected by these reforms i mean there have been talks about women who have kids and that sort of thing um or is that just a side issue but the, the reform is uh, uh mainly in, in impacting uh women and uh, uh uh because it means that women who have been working uh for um uh, who have paid into the system for the 42, 43 years will still have to work until 64. They will have to give another two years into the system, even though their right to a retirement is already uh, is already uh, um, um, achieved. Um, like I said, um, uh, Macron is trying to balance a budget, and his uh, um, uh, the pressure is coming from uh, the, Europe, the European Union. His plan is to reach the uh, level of 3% uh, public deficit by 27. And in order to do this, he, need, he needs to fill the hole he's, he's uh, dug by reducing taxes on uh, richer people. So, um, you know, he's, he's cutting on public spending because he's cut on earnings for the state. So that, that is the logic that um, he's followed. There was also, um, I think, a pension reform committee of the government, which came up with, I think, eight different scenarios in the future. And I didn't look into this in detail, but it seemed like all of the eight scenarios looked pretty bad. Was that sort of a cover up to cover up the fact that they're just not doing enough taxation of the rich and they're treating this issue as if it's, oh, we now have a problem. We need to ensure that people work longer so that we can pay for people's pensions. The, the, uh, the, the, the uh, organization you're referring to is called the CORE, the Conseil d'Orientation yeah. des Retraites. And uh, they did have a report saying that in the next couple of years, there would be some deficit, but only for a couple of years. And the government used that to say, well, we are facing chaos. You know, the government actually talked about 100 billion euros deficit. You know, they turned it into something uh, major, but you know there was no, there's no, um, uh, uh, there's no problem in uh, financing the re uh, the the pension system in France if you don't touch taxation, you know. But if you decide to destroy the system by preventing, you know, uh, sources of earnings for the state, obviously you're ruining the balance, you know. But it, it's a created problem. Just to be a bit contrarian, um, France does spend 30% of its GDP on social welfare. So could you make the argument that they really are, like this deficit is real and that they can't come up with this money from any other source and that they're already paying so much 
into the system. So people are getting, you know, they get paid for maternity leave and that's not the case in a lot of other countries. They get other sorts of subsidies. So, you know, they should just stop complaining and just work a bit longer. Well, um, uh, I appreciate the effort to be contrarian. Uh, a lot of, a lot of um, the media are already doing it in France, <laughs> but not on the analysis. Uh, more seriously, France is a country where GDP is uh, highly dependent on consumption. If you mm. if you prevent people from cons uh, from consuming, then it's it's the entire economy that is going to collapse. Um, the the uh, there were like I said, there was no um, pro the financing uh, problem to the system before Macron actually uh, cut taxes on the rich. And why did he do that? He said that if we cut taxes on the rich, then you know it's going to trickle down and jobs are going to be created. Jobs have not been created. So basically, you know, you have the same argument whereby, you know, you need to, to take care of the rich and the poor need to make an effort because tomorrow this is going to pay off. It hasn't paid off, you know. So really, there's no, there's no reason why um, even trying to be contrarian and why you should, uh, you should do this to the pension system in France. Well, he has been um, he has been trying to answer some questions on corporate greed. Just seeing some of his speeches, it's not like he's not aware of the fact that companies are profiting from inflation, from the COVID crisis, from supply chain issues, and that sort of thing. And so, I did hear him say that companies which have extremely high profits should direct some of these profits to the workers. Um, they should make sure that that um, stock buybacks are not allowed. But as far as I've seen, I haven't seen any you know, concrete measures as to how the workers in those companies would actually benefit from those profits. Have you seen anything? No, I, I haven't. And obviously, you know, all these uh, um, uh, snippets need, need to be put uh, into the context where you know, they, they appear. Uh, obviously, Macron is going through a very difficult patch Macron has increased. I mean, he's been the president under which the uh, um, the 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 rich the the richest the richer part of the population has increased its wealth fastest. You know, he's he's called the president des riches, the the the, the you know the president for the rich. Okay. He hasn't done anything, you know, to 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 limit their capacity to get richer. Now he's discovering that discourse, you know, he's, he's, he's making these speeches at the moment, you know, but uh, um, um, he, his minister for the economy, Bruno Le Maire, uh, is famous for having asked uh, companies to try and make an effort. Please, you know, I'm, I'm asking companies to try and make an effort, not to raise prices, you know. I mean, that's the extent of how, yeah, how much, you know, they, they, they want to, to fight against corporate greed and, and, and the like, you know. Um, so, so, no, Macron is not, is not uh, going to, um, to curtail uh, that, you know, uh, the, the way the, the, the rich are becoming richer in France at the moment. Definitely not. Well, we were speaking about how a lot of young people have been out on the streets because they, they know that this erosion of... Uh, democracy and also this, this, these no, neoliberal policies will ultimately affect them regardless of when they actually start working. Um, but which generation is actually right now most affected by this reform? Is it you know, the people who are born in like the mid-60s to mid-70s? It's people who are most affected by the actual reform are people um, who are today between 55 and 50, 60 years of age. Okay. And so obviously it's not the younger people who are taking to the street at the moment, but there is a, um, a conflation of events. Now, the way Mac Macron has sent police forces against uh, demonstrations, this has happened as well uh, during... Um, the demonstration for the uh, uh, again to, um, this has happened as well for demonstration in favor of uh, uh, climate responsibility you know uh, a very radical uh, root based movements uh, um, militant uh, uh, green activists and they've faced a lot of uh, police repression as well and uh, uh, the same that trade unions and people taking to the street for the uh, uh, against the uh, pension reform have faced 
and this has created um, the the uh, realization. You know, people have understood that it's all part and parcel. You know, the 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 the, uh, the pension reform, the the promotion of uh, pollution, uh, uh, that logic whereby you need to produce more and more uh, neoliberalism. All of this, this is called Macron today. You know, and and people are joining forces against him because he's become the the embodiment of everything that is not working. Well, it's also very telling that the initial name of the party, En Marche, is actually his initials, Emmanuel Macron. So that really does show how full of himself and arrogant he is and how he, in my view at least, doesn't really fully believe in these democratic principles that he keeps bringing up. And he's been traveling the world in you know to probably distract from the mess that's at home you know giving speeches in in china um different climate speeches in in the us a 60 minutes interview going on msnbc just having all these different media appearances just trying to make himself appear like you know a strong statesman who knows what he's doing and he's I almost feel like this this quality of not listening to people on the streets is, in his view and according to his party, something that's to be respected. Like, we know what the answer is. We're the technocrats. We have the expertise. And so we're going to push through these reforms regardless of what people think and, and how they feel. So there's this disregard for the general public. I don't I don't really buy into you know, the idea that you, we should... Um, we should uh, um... Uh, have technocrats uh, guiding us, but you know, let's say we did believe in this, you know, and uh, Macron has failed in that respect as well. I mean, his government has more problems with justice than any uh, in the last fifteen years. You know, uh, uh, that it, it, um, one of his closest aides is uh, facing difficulties with justice because of. Um, uh, 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 conflicts of interest, uh, and you know, so many of his ministers are faced with similar issues. You know, so even that, even you know, the idea that they know best, they're not very sympathetical. You know, they're not very nice people, but you know, they know best. Let them do, you know, what they know how to do. Even that is not working anymore. You know, they 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 can't uh, play that that card. Um, uh, but uh, re regarding the way. Macron feels about himself. Um, yesterday, I think, he got his um, uh, representative in the National Assembly to pass a law whereby it is now compulsory for town halls to uh, put up a portrait, a portrayal, um, um, a picture of him uh, as president. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And so what happens if you throw an egg at it or graffiti? <laughs> is, that, is that then destruction of property? <laughs> well, no, no, that's um, a disrespect to the uh, presidential, you know, people have, um, people have been, um, have had to answer questions uh, at police stations for, for putting out signs saying Macron, uh, tête de cochon, or Macron, you pig face, or things like that, you know? It's Wasn't there a woman who posted on Facebook, I believe, you know, just showing and expressing her opposition to Macron, and she was, I believe she was arrested, wasn't she? It's very possible. I haven't heard that story, but it's very possible. Now, people should know, people watching us now should know that last week, a neo-Nazi organization marched in Paris and they not only were allowed, you know, but they were accompanied by the police. There was no, that, there was no problem with this. Now, if they had had a banner saying Macron um, tête de con, which, you know, is a very polite insult, uh, they would have had problem with the police, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's where we're at at the moment. And um, like I started by saying, you know, there was something joyful about the demonstrations, and it's because we do believe that you know this cannot, you know, this is not possible. This can, it cannot stay like this, you know. But it's also quite scary, you know, mm -hmm. the level of police violence and the impunity they're receiving, you know, they're benefiting from. And the fact that neo-Nazi, and they're not, you know, this is not an expression. This is not me, you know, saying, oh, they're right wing, therefore they're neo-Nazi. No, they are neo-Nazis, you know, and they're marching in the streets in France. And the narrative is also focused so much on the quote-unquote violence of the people 
Yeah. Not saying that, you know, they're unacceptable acts of violence. I support protesters, respect them, but not these unacceptable acts of violence on the streets, which is to sort of deflect from, I think, a lot of the police violence that we've seen and just beating up protesters. Some people have lost eyes, horrible things. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you one last question, which is a bit more economic, looking at uh, the 2010 economic crisis, the what they call the sovereign debt crisis in Europe, but which a lot of economists have actually explained was a, a banking crisis and which involved German and French banks over lending to Greece. And so when Greece had to be bailed out, a lot of the money that went to Greece ended up going back to paying the loans and paying the interests on those German and French uh, bank loans. How do you think the austerity politics, which was implemented at the time to you know, cut public expenditure, how did that play into the current moment? Well, um... I mean, it's you know, liberal, neoliberalism, and, and Macron is the representative of these neoliberal policies. But at the same time, I feel like there was some sort of tension or resistance to austerity in France. And that was the debate between France and Germany. Yeah. Germany was all for the austerity, whereas France was, on paper at least, not really for the austerity and they had more debt. Well, I mean, it's 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 quite a long sequence. That sequence that leads from the subprime debt crisis to today. Um, there were several moments, you know, each of which certainly played some kind of a part. I think one of the big moments in France for French people, for the left and for the right, um, for even the far right, was the Greek crisis. Now, what happened during the Greek crisis and the near collapse of the eurozone was to what extent what had been presented as the bee's knee just didn't work. You know, that that uh, common currency, just well, not common currency, single currency right. didn't work, you know, and uh, 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 that it was um, it was costing populations uh, uh, too much. Now, in 2017, during the presidential election in France, out of, if my memory is correct, 11 candidates, I think nine of them, were in favor of leaving the, the European Union, you know, and because of the uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, pressure that Europe, the European Union, the neoliberal pressure of the European Union is putting on France. Now, the, the next sequence that was, I think, that played into what we're living at the moment was the COVID. And mm. at that time, Macron said, you know, whatever it takes. And that was a very important speech. And so much money was poured into private companies, you know, to to save them that people have said, you know, what well, there is money in spite of what they said before. So, OK, now the, you know, the tap is turned. We are going to receive some money, you know, and it was not the case. And now they're saying, well, you know, we need to make an effort. You know, we need to balance the books, you know. But listen, last year, only two years ago, you said we need to support companies and the private sector. And there was so much money. And uh, I think people are, you know, are copying on to all of this, you know. So, yes, yeah, certainly it is playing into, you know, that sequence of events. Um, you're probably right. And unfortunately, a lot of this disillusionment with the government is also playing into the right wing parties. And yeah. This current reform. So yeah. hopefully it doesn't lead to any more support from Marine Le Pen and her national rally party. No, but there is um there is something that the left cannot uh, avoid uh, seeing, and even people who know, who are not you know strategists for the left. Now, this movement has lasted you know a couple of months in France. We've had, like I said, over twelve demonstrations of over one million people in France, uh, where a majority, uh, a very wide majority, and even despite that, we haven't managed to win a struggle that is only a defensive struggle. We're not fighting to conquer any new right, any new disposition. We are preventing the neoliberal state from crushing us further. That, that shows the level of the, the, the amount of effort, the struggle we need to, we'll need to put in the day we're ready to go for a, a, um, a positive struggle to conquer new rights, you know? And that is daunting. Uh, daunting. Uh, it is a da very daunting task ahead of the French population, but also 
other people throughout Europe. I think this is something which is a similar experience shared by different people in Europe, also in North America. Just, you know, this austerity politics and cutting the budget, cutting public expenditure at the expense of the most vulnerable. Yeah. Well, Vano Lambert, it was really great having you on the show to speak about Macron and the pension reforms and social movements in France. So I hope we can have you on again, hopefully once there's some positive news coming out of France. With pleasure. And thank you for watching the analysis.news. If you've watched this episode and liked it, please do go to our website, theanalysis.news, and consider making a contribution. Most importantly, get on our newsletter. That way you'll be informed every time a new episode drops. And go to the YouTube channel, The Analysis Hyphen News. Click on the like button for all the episodes you want to watch and hit subscribe. And see you next time.